Okay, so welcome to the first of six weeks of Thursday nights. For those of you who want to come on to all of them, we hope that you will. The whole idea for this is to get you guys ready for Christmas and ourselves as well. But um, share the advice that we have. We did a, a series like this last year and I think it went worked pretty well. And um, we thought we'd uh, do it again. So as, we, as you know, tonight is all about um, Christmas gifts um, as is next week. Um, before we start, I just want to check if you could, the chat box is down the bottom there. Is there anyone on here at the moment who does not own um, a Thermomix? If you could just pop in the chat um, what you what you have um, in your kitchen or what you're expecting in your kitchen, that would be really helpful. Um, so chat box just down the bottom. Uh, and whilst you're um, doing that, I'm just going to mention that um, in case anyone doesn't have one or you're looking to upgrade, we have an amazing offer on at the moment, which is a second bowl and blade set for $29 when you purchase a TM6. So um, that is the best um, offer we have ever seen, any of us. And Irene and Irene's been around for 11 years, I think. So um, it's a pretty damn good offer. <laughs> Okay, um, what else let's tell you? Um, yeah, so no one's no one's being very chatty in the chat box. So I'll assume that you all thank you, Yvonne. <laughs> TM6, wonderful. All right. Well, look, we might keep um moving and and get on with what we're what we're here for. And um towards the end, I'll just check. And if anybody else has joined us who hasn't got a TM6, I'm happy to show you around. So um, I should have said, my name's Mandy, for those who don't know me. Um, I'm the team leader for our multicultural mixers and we have Irene and Pearl helping um, in their kitchens tonight as well. All right, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is make um, a <coughs> peanut fudge sauce. So today we are focusing more on sweet things and next week we will focus more on savory gifts. Just going to bring this in a bit closer. So I have peanut butter fudge sauce here. Let's take my lid off. And it's asking me for 100 grams of unsalted peanuts. Now you can actually use salted if you prefer, but I had unsalted and wasn't going to go out and buy salted. So they go in. There's a little bit over. And then it's asking me just pop the lid on. <coughs> And we're going to do eight seconds on speed four. That's obviously just crushed up our um, peanuts. Oh, they're still quite chunky. There's some that are crushed up a bit and um, others are quite chunky. All right. So then I'm adding 20 grams of grapeseed oil. Like all good consultants, I have pre-prepared. Hopefully enough comes out. Here we go. 100 grams of dark um, chocolate. So I'm very, very lucky because Boone heads off to Costco every now and then. So these are some of the really good quality lint um, chocolates. Lid on. That lint or calibre? Oh, yeah, the calibre. Yes, that one. I never know so how to pronounce Calibor it. Calibort is a Belgian chocolate, so less sweet than the Swiss chocolate. Thank you. Yeah. All right. 10 seconds speed eight. I think that will have... Um, Made my peanuts a little bit uh, finer, like very fine. Here we go. So that's all chopped up. I'm just going to scrape down the sides as it's asked me to do. Mm, smells amazing. Okay. Then I have a whole lot of things that I've just put together in one container. I've got 250 grams of whipping cream. I've got 20 grams of unsalted butter. I've got 50 grams of honey, 50 grams of maple syrup. And I haven't put the salt in yet, but I will do that in a second. So all those bits and pieces are in here. They're going in. Well, my honey is quite a thick honey. So um, lucky is going to be, that will melt it all down. Right. 
So as you can see, this is a very healthy knot. <laughs> but it's a Christmas treat, it's a Christmas treat. All right, salt. So I've just got some sea salt here, big pinch. And then I'm gonna pop the lid on that. And that is gonna cook for three minutes. Okay, now whilst it's cooking, I just wanted to show you something. I'll just move a little bit away from it. So one of the things um, when you're making Christmas treats is, um, is labeling. Uh, and you can obviously go and buy some pretty labels. So one of the things that I've been doing is actually, if you go to some of the office works and you buy Avery labels, they have online, um, just gotta pick it up first, hold on, at the right page. Share my screen here. So this is the sort of thing that you can find if you go to Avery. So it's A V E R Y. Um, they have various labels here, so you can actually, you know, make your labels a little bit pretty. Uh, and my writing is the worst writing ever. So for me, um, if I do a label on here, it's going to look an awful lot nicer than um, me handwriting. Um, some, of, some of you probably got amazing handwriting, but mine is bad. <laughs> so for me, this is a really good option. And, you know, and there's different designs. I did try and search Christmas, it didn't come up with it, but I, I think when you actually buy the, the labels, they have um, a number on them. And if you plug that number in, it will come up with specific labels for that number. So I just thought that would be a, you know, quite an interesting thing to share with you. And I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, and I'll just show you one of the labels that I have made. So this was one of their labels. And it's just lemon curd. But um, I didn't put it on very well, it's a big crease. But, um, but you can see that's a lot nicer and it looks a lot smarter. And they do, with this, this um, label number, they certainly have some Christmas options as well. So um, that's, a, that's a really cool way to do your labelling instead of, you know, scrappy writing. All right, let's come back to the thermix. I've got a minute left to go on there. So what I'll um, also just show you is I'm going to make um, some toffee in a minute, so the caramel toffee, using the high heat or the sugar stages function of the TM6. Um, so delicious. We ate so much of it this morning because I made a, made a batch this morning. But this is what it actually turns out like. Um, and um, so it's quite hard. Uh, and um, what you need to do for packaging that is you need some baking paper. So this is the parchment paper that I prefer to use because it is actually compostable. And you just cut it off into strips and then into little pieces. And you wrap your toffee up because so the toffee is very sticky. And what I've done this morning was wrap it up. And um, it's just in here. So you can see each, each piece is just wrapped up in some of that parchment. Uh, and you can just, this little box I got, I forgot what they're called. Boone will tell me what they're called, I'm sure, these little boxes. Um, but they, um, I got them a few years ago from Spotlight. They had them in green and they had them in red. And they're quite nice for little Christmas gifts. All right, let's go back to my screen. So that's cooked. And basically I've got to set it aside to thicken and then transfer into a sterilised jar. So it is quite runny at the moment. Um, so I will just put it aside. And um, I have sterilised the jar, which is just here. I obviously need to make a pretty label for it. So how quick was that one? Like three minutes. Um, okay. So I'm going to move on now to the other one that I am making, which is the toffee. Okay. My week. Caramel toffees. All right, second bowl. This is why it's good to get a deal with a cheap second bowl because it's so easy you can just move from one recipe to the other. Now, really, really important with sugar stages, it tells you on the front page here, to guarantee the success of recipes using sugar stages, please follow the exact quantity and description of all ingredients. And I have learned from experience that it, it really does mean this. So um, we do have to add some butter in. And if your butter's too small, it won't recognize it and it won't let you go ahead. 
So just making sure, yeah, and cook it immediately after placing the sugar with the other ingredients in the mixing bowl. So I've lined a baking tray and being me, I think it's exactly what I used this morning. The, the toffee has come off really well. So and it's only toffee going back in. So I'm going to reuse that. Okay, 315 grams of toffee. Okay, so I'm going to Thirty grams of water. This is actually somewhere. Uh, um, you no, know, this is actually is a measuring cup. I don't use it very often as a measuring cup, but when it's thirty grams of water, I do. So I'm just going to pop some water in there. It's got the pouring spout, so that makes it really easy. I feel like I'm under pressure with this one. But yeah, thirty. Okay. Then we have 250 grams of whipping cream. This cream. Turn my scales. We'll do. There we go. All right. Then 80 grams of butter chilled and cut into pieces no smaller than two to three centimetres. All right. So that's what um, I know that's OK. I actually got the, the um, measuring tape <laughs> to measure it. Uh, and there's one teaspoon of lemon juice in there too. So I'll pop those two in. OK. Next. One to two spoons of, uh, spoons, teaspoons of natural vanilla extract. I just have this vanilla bean paste. So that's gone in. Next. All right, so I am going to be using the flash guard, which I have conveniently put away. So when you are using sugar stages or the high heat, which are only acceptable in um, guided cooking, um, I am going to, it will ask you to put the splash guard on. Um, so your measuring cup is not in the hole. You just have the splash guard over the top. And you'll probably see when I turn it on, you have to press, um, press done. Uh, and before I move it, you see that little picture there? That's, that shows it's sugar stages. And it's going to cook for 25 um, minutes. Uh, and when, because of the little lugs at the side of my splash guard, it's going to, they're going to be um, contained with the arms as well when I turn it on. And that's it. So 25 minutes and we'll come back when, when it's ready to pour out. But what we're going to do now is move over to Irene. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I am making the almond biscotti and I'm also making the cranberry and pistachio cookie gift jar. I'm going to start with the biscotti. Um, it's really, really easy, guys. The only thing is it's very sticky to work with, so, um, which you'll know once you do it. So pretty much I've got everything in here. So let me just go back to this. Click on. Sorry, I already made a batch earlier, so I've got to go back to the beginning of my recipe, which you can do for everyone. The little dots there, click on those dots, go back to recipe details, and then I'm just going to go back to step Step one. So step one, now this recipe, the almond biscotti recipe is in ounces and Fahrenheit because it's using obviously an American website. Look, I, I tested this recipe um, on that horrendous 30 degree day <laughs> Tuesday, which is not a good idea, but anyway, it doesn't matter. 350 degrees, so it's about 175 degrees Celsius. And I found that they colored too quickly and a little bit too dark. So for me, 160 degrees to bake, and then to 100 degrees to dehydrate until they're ready. Um, you don't want too much colour on them. So in here I've got, oh, I should actually mention the things you need to get ready. So get your baking tray ready, get your thermomat out, and get yourself a bowl of water. You'll understand when we get to it. So it asks for um, nine ounces of flour, seven ounces of sugar, 
pinch of salt, two, tables, uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, um, asks for some anise flavoured liqueur. So let me just pop all of those dry ingredients in. So I've just pre-weighed all of those to save some time. I'm using Ouzo. Um, I like this brand. This is what my mum's used for as long as I can remember. Um, that was on special, about $39. I've made already four batches of the squashy and we made a lots of um, on this on the weekend into the almond biscuits with the ice and sugar. So one bottle is going to last you a long time unless you obviously drink it, but let's... Um... I had no idea there was alcohol in Sorry? I had no idea there was alcohol in biscuits. Well, it says anise flavoured liqueur. So oh, okay. it's as close as I'm going to get to it. So I guess you could use almond. Um, you could use a vanilla extract if you wanted to. You use lemon zest, orange zest. You can use other things. You can use spices like cardamom, cinnamon, nutmeg. Like you don't have to use the alcohol if you don't want to. Um, it's not a lot. So it's about as, you know, it says half, half an ounce. I might have gone a little bit over. Okay. Love it. Um, okay, it asks for two large eggs and one egg yolk. They're going in. I've used 700 gram eggs. And essentially, it's going to need that for a minute. Can you hear me over Can you hear me over Sorry, I'm here. Can you can hear, hear me you, over Amy. that or not? We can hear you. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I'll show you. We can, we can hear you. So I've got a um Science it is. I can find out, but it's basically an Australian tin that I used when I baked my first batch of biscotti. So I'm going to show you two styles of baking it. If, when I first baked that at 175, that came out really dark, so hence the lighter temperature. So this is still warm. So that's been out of the oven for about five minutes. I'm just going to release it, make sure it's not something to spray it. Just make sure it comes out. So you actually still slice it when it's warm. So I'm just going to pull that out. So um, this is called a loyal cake tin. Oops. You guys can see that. Made in Australia. Um, I might measure it later, post the sizes for you. Um, so that's one option. They come in lots of different sizes. So I'm going to slice that, but we'll come back to that in a second. The next step through this is to add the almonds. I want to show you this mixture, though. Um, it's really sticky. So you can see how dense that is, really, really difficult. Um, I'm gonna pop these almonds inside. It gets even stickier. That's gonna mix for another 40 seconds. There's a question, where did you buy the tin? Um, I got that from Essential Ingredient at Paran Market. But I'm sure I've seen them. It's just a tin. So it's just, you're just really looking for something in that shape if you want them to come out like the way I've done them here. But I'm going to do a freestyle on, on a pan so you can decide which one you like to use. Um, but Loyal is a brand that's available pretty much anywhere. Like it's a, it's one of the, it's a specialty cake tin though. Like it's not going to, you're not going to find it at David Giants or Maya. Um, you'll find it at Chef's Hat. You'll find it at Essential Ingredient. Um, there's a place called um, Dream Cake. Um, now, sorry, I want to show you. I was going to do this. Um, my preference is to mix this by hand. If you use the machine to do this or use a thermomix to do this, it's going to break the nuts down a little bit and you're going to get, uh, I guess, speckles of that inside, which is absolutely fine. But honestly, it takes, rather than do the 40 seconds there, my preference is just to do it by hand. Um, we're pretty much done. So that's how I prefer to do it rather than end up with, I guess, broken bits of um, almonds in there. So essentially, I'm just going to move the camera down. While it's still warm, you can slice it. 
Now you would have seen those really ultra thin biscottis um, that you can get, um, except I've put a put that pistachio right there. Now see how this is breaking? That's because it's still a little bit too hot. So I'm just gonna let it cool down a little bit longer. But essentially what you'll get is that sort of size. And I like to get those really thin ones. So I'm gonna slice this when it's just a fraction, a little bit, I just need to give it a little bit, um, a little bit longer to cool down. It looks like it'd be delicious with butter on it now. <laughs> Probably. But I will get back to those in a minute. So essentially this comes out onto your mat. And I did say it was sticky. And hence, that's what we've got the water for. So that's going to help me shape them. And a soft spatula is not going to work for this. You need to use the, um, the Thermomix spatula to get it out of the bowl. My kitchen smells like miso. Can you get drunk on the scent? Okay. All out. So I'm just, I've just dipped my hand into the water. And it probably wouldn't hurt to have a spatula. You can definitely use the little green one from Thermomix. But essentially what it's asking you to do is split this into three and do them into logs. So I've drawn the exact size of what they've asked us to do. So basically, one and a half inches. I've done it obviously I've turned it up the other way so that I don't cook on that side. So one and a half inches by 12 inches. And essentially I'm going to split this into the three shapes and do those along that way and, and bake them in that in that um, size. So I think the easiest way is probably just to do it straight on. I was going to do it on the mat, but I think. Um, you know, you watch some videos, they basically roll it in um, roll it in flour, but I actually don't think you need to do that. I'm just going to put each batch basically into that area on my tray. I'm just going to use the water to help me shape it. Shape it down. Can you guys see that? Yeah. We can. Good, good, good. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just going to wet my hands. And spread it. And I wouldn't stress if it's not perfect because we're going to smooth it out. Has anybody else made this coffee before? Any of you on there? And look, yeah, it would be easier if you rolled it in flour like they do to, I guess, make it easier to put together. But I'm just following the instructions. And you can see it comes pretty quickly together back in shape just with that bit of water. Now, obviously, the tin means you're not fiddling around like this. And you're going to get a much more even, even bake. But they're not meant to be, I guess, uniform either. 
So Irene, the idea of doing it this way, is that so you get smaller biscotti? You're going to get smaller biscotti. You've seen how fat the other ones turned out. Yeah. And I think they'll be, be a bit more rounded. Um, the first time I tried this, I was telling the girls earlier, I used biscuit flour. I use biscuit flour when we make our curambieves um, because they end up really soft and tender. But that flour made this spread out and they looked more like pancakes. You'll see the finished product on those. But essentially, we're ready to go. Okay, so I've got my three discs. And they're not moving like my first batch because I was using the wrong flour. So they're going to go in the oven half an hour, 160 degrees, and we'll come back. Um, I'll keep slicing the other ones and I'll come back and show you what they look like on the pan before I bake them at 100 degrees. Thank you. All right, well, we'll head over to Pearl. Thank you. Oh, there's a question, um, Irene. Has anyone made them using gluten-free flour? Has anyone tried that? Because you, you said you used a different flour before and this is better. Um, so I use a biscuit flour, which is a really light protein flour, and that was just based on the quantities in the thermix. It was just not enough. There simply just wasn't enough flour in the mixture. I could tell, I mean, I don't, when you bake it long enough, you're like, this doesn't look right, this doesn't feel right. Um, so I knew what the solution was, was to get a proper plain flour. Um, can you do them? I think the answer is yes, because biscotti is meant to be really hard and dry biscuit that you're meant to dip into coffee or tea. So um, to play, I guess gluten-free flour is going to definitely be more coarse and more dry. So I think this would be a perfect one for doing biscottis. Um, and in fact, I'll see if I can find some recipes. I don't think there's anything on cookie do, but that isn't to say we can't convert it. So that's coming soon. <laughs> and we can pop it onto cookie do and have it there. But yes, I think it would work really, really well. It's a bit different with doing our curambieves, where you're meant to have that really soft, tender texture. It doesn't quite work the same. I think Pearl's ready to go. Sorry, Irene, I just thought I was... No, 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 just move on. Yep, she's ready. Yeah, okay. I was, uh, today I'm making something Goan, which is called Kormolas or Kalkals. In Goa, it's a very big thing. Christmas is a very big festival. You'll have people uh, gathering together, or we have we used to have people, employ people to make from morning till evening sweets so that we can give them to all the neighbours around, especially the non-Catholic neighbors we give them sweets because they'll give us for Diwali and uh, whatever other festivals they have they send the sweets around so it's our turn to give them sweets so let's start let me go here okay so I'll just so today I've already made the dough because it has to rest for about two hours. So I'll just go through the recipe. That's on the, I was quite happy to see the recipe on thermomix. So you've got 30 grams of ghee. The only thing I've done is doubled my quantities because one, 125 grams of flour, plain flour, was too little for us. So I've doubled everything. So 60 grams of ghee I've put, 250 grams of plain flour, 60 grams of semolina, White, 60 grams of sugar, then 70 grams of uh, coconut milk, two uh, egg yolks, vanilla essence, vegetable oil, and icing sugar dust on top. So it's a very easy, simple recipe. You just knead it. Then once you knead it, then you get a dough, you rest it for some time. Now here the thermomix mats come in handy. So I've got this here. So I'll show you how we make these up karmolas. So you just hold it in your hands, a square, and you uh, uh, roll it out very fine. Just hold these two ends like this together. And you hold these two and just make it into a flower shape. I'll just show you another one. So just join these two alternate uh, diagonal ends together join these two together, make it into a flower. It's so simple. Oh, when do, you a, know do how. a couple more. Okay. <laughs> it's simple when you know how. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you with your wontons. Yeah. So, yeah, so you take these two, join these two together. 
join these two together and but press them hard because when you fry them in oil they open up so you another more another the one this join this make it like an end block and here at the back very simple that's amazing yeah. and also uh, this is called kormolas there is something kalkals kalkals is different i'll just show you that as well so this is the dough the consistency of the dough is like this it's quite thin or soft very soft you take this make a small ball like this this size hold it on the back of your fork place it like this and then slowly turn it around and you get that's amazing so i'll show you another one a small ball just flat on your back of the fork and just turn it even wow. this make sure that it does edges see so that's i've already made some and fried and i'll show it to you this is what i did in the first batch wow and that's very amazing pearl yeah. and they're nice see but you'll see some have opened out they see so make sure that you seal them and these are the other ones that you make into a flower shape so how would you serve it up uh, just eat it you can uh, sprinkle uh, icing sugar on top just to make it look nice but you just eat it that's why my plate is almost empty it was full <laughs> kids, they everyone likes it because it's very light it's not too heavy and so is is it sweet it is sweet yes hmm. Yeah. What was that? What was the sweetener? Sorry. What was the sweetener? Uh, sugar. Sugar. Oh, sugar. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that. The recipe that it says seventy grams of sugar. I mistake. I put hundred, and still my husband tells me it's not too sweet. Right. <laughs> make another batch. Make another batch, and make it a little sweeter. <laughs> But uh, I'm quite happy with the sweetness as well. And I'm not changing the recipe at all. I've used. Exactly the thermomix recipe. Yeah, um, uh, City's got a question. Um, could you do it without adding any sugar? Yeah, you'll have to put some other sweetener. Okay. Just to get that taste. Otherwise, you won't have taste. It'll taste like bread. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. It has got coconut milk and it has got sugar. And and then you just deep fry them. Yeah. Or shallow fry them. No, deep fry them. I want to try frying them in the air fryer. I want to ah, see how they. Okay. So I, I haven't done that as yet, but I, I'm going to do that now. Okay. Um, another question: Will they stay crunchy, or will they go soft no. after a while? No, they'll stay crunchy. They stay crunchy because you've got semolina in it. So semolina is something that is uh, the small grains of uh, I don't know what it is. Fine powder. Um, yeah. Yeah. that you're you're cutting out a bit pearl you have to um yeah talk yeah so because of the semolina it remains crunchy okay fantastic yeah. wonderful all right so you're going to have a go at the air fry with those and I'll do a little bit on cookie dough fantastic thank you you know what i love this is what i love about this team multicultural mixers everybody's got all their little techniques they can show us i would never have thought to hold like that and um it's just amazing all right so i'm going to share my screen and just go on to cookie do got pearl's recipe up here at the moment um now i'll just give you a quick little tour cuz i know there's probably a couple of people on here who haven't seen a lot of cookie do uh so this is our recipe platform that we have access to through our um smart connected tm6 uh it basically gives you um some ideas so if you allow um forverb to see your recipes that you're cooking 
um, they will make suggestions for you. You can also personalize your profile. And again, that, that will help with that. That looks really nice. I've never seen that before, but they, they picked me here because it's got cauliflower in it rather than, than, than real couscous. <laughs> Um, it looks divine though. It does look so good, doesn't it? Um, Maria Stewart's actually a consultant in Gippsland. That's her. Um, she, she's a wish the pastry cook as well. Uh, obviously, the latest things were um, Halloween things. Um, and we are getting this blade cover and peeler, which is arriving um, sometime, whether it's this month or next month. Um, you can peel potatoes with it, apparently. But I think you can, you can register to... Um, be notified when it's in stock. Uh, the most cooked things recently, we've got cottage pie. Anyway, so there's all that stuff there. Then we can go in here and let's just, because we are um, looking at, I'm putting Christmas. I mean, honestly, these gifts could be, you know, for, for any reason at all. Um, it's just nice, I think, to, particularly with the year we've been through, to be able to, you know, show a bit of love and make some things. So we've got um, cakes, um, but here we go. Irene's going to show you this in a minute, too. That's very cool. But um, there's a whole lot of different um, ideas on here. And I actually pulled together a bit of a collection. So if I go into my created collection here, um, I have Christmas gifts here. So this one um, apparently is delicious. Uh, there's uh, at least a few consultants in our branch who make this on a regular basis. Um, and it's, a, it's like a chocolate salami. So you've got biscuits, you've got dried fruit and nuts, um, you've got chocolate and a couple of few egg yolks just to pull it all together. And, um, and the chocolate, um, you know, melts it, it all, you, know, you, you saw what it looks like. So basically you mix it all together and then you put it onto some baking paper and make it into a, 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 into a sausage roll shape and you let it um, set um, three hours and then you then you slice it. So a bit like um, Irene's biscotti in the way that you you know you, you have to make this and then you actually finish it off by slicing it. But apparently a lot of people will recommend that, and it is um, it will last for a week. So that's one of the things you'd have to make a little bit closer to Christmas. Um, there's obviously you know a whole lot of gingerbread cookies and things. These biscuits, you know, we, we're going to look at the savoury things next week. So I'm not going to sort of go gloss over those a little bit the white chocolate and strawberry rocky road <coughs> lemon butter if you haven't made the the lemon butter it is the best thing um i actually had a customer this year who bought a thermomix to make lemon butter because it's so good and it really is so good um the salted caramel sauce that was a very close runner-up for my choices tonight because that is amazing <laughs> it's so delicious uh, and, and almond addiction is another one that's, um, it, it's all so dangerous though, but you know, so make it, give it away quickly. <laughs> Otherwise you'll sit there and eat it. So good. Um, there's another one here, um, a chocolate and anise fruit bark. So lots of different things um, that you can actually make. Here's the almond, some almond biscotti, um, the pan fort. So there are heaps and heaps of different um, ideas that you can have to, to make um, Christmas gifts in there. I'm just going to check my, I've got, I've got four minutes before my toffee finishes. Um, yeah, so what you can do, that's obviously in a collection, but if I go, right, actually, I'd really like to try that. I'm going to make that. So I'm going to add it to my week. I'm going to put it in, I'll put it in for tomorrow so it's easy to find. Okay, um, and I might go through and say, well, you know, oh, there, here we go, um, Fleur, gluten-free gingerbread biscuits for you. Christmas pudding tiffin balls. Okay, look, you know, maybe, maybe I'll make some of those as well because, you know, they're a good thing to take into, um, into um, work anyway, put some of those in. Uh, and then if I come to my week, here they are sitting in there for tomorrow. And what I could do then, actually, I made this zucchini lasagna today. That's very delicious. Um, you can add it to your shopping list. Add this to my shopping list as well. And I've got a few other bits and pieces in there. Show ingredients. All right. And I've got six recipes in there. I think I've probably shopped for some of them. But you can just then go through your cupboards. You can go, well, um, what would I have in there? I have the raw sugar. I wouldn't have the white chocolate. Got the rum. 
Uh, I've got the dark chocolate. I'd need to get the biscuits. I'd need to get the milk chocolate. You go through here, you click off the things that you've, that you've got. If there's anything else you want to add, you can pop it in there. And then what you can do is you can click on order ingredients and it's going to take you to Woolworths online. It only does Woolworths, but um, if that's your choice of shop and you shop online, all you need to do is make sure you've got a Woolworths um, cart in account and you can um, click and collect or you can um, you know, have it delivered to you. So that's a really cool feature of um, Cookie Do. Sorry, I've just got to find the, I want to get out of that. Okay. So that's that's um, how you can you can do that. And um, but the easiest, the best thing to do is to search for some recipes and things and um, and make collections. Okay, thanks, Natalie. Natalie's saying, can, um, instead of sugar, you can use stevia. That's a great idea. Cool. Um, the other thing I thought I'd quick. Um, how, how's everyone going? Are any of you want us to come back to you? Yeah. You're on mute. Well, you could all lip read, it's okay. Um, I'm just slicing. So I'm just basically using really slowly, you know, serrating it. And I'm just putting it onto, um, these are on our mix shop. These are our baking mats. So I'm just using it straight onto a rack. Um, I don't have enough trays in here, but that's okay. I'm just going to pop these in. Like I said, 100 degrees, because I don't want to get any more colour. Um, you can see they're quite, um, I want to keep that lovely, bright in here anyway um i don't want to get any more color on that and the written i'll show you <coughs> why because if you look at these look how dark they've turned out and how blonde these are i want them to stay that color and that's that 15 degree difference so don't do that yeah mm, incredible amazing okay. like 15, yeah but sorry so 160 degree bake and 100 degree dehydration i think they're asking you to dehydrate at um about 130 degrees and that's what I did with these and you can see how dark they're still going to eat them I took them to work so no problem there I was going to find volunteers to eat all your leftovers so no problem <laughs> okay so so basically um you, they're baked and then you then you, you slice them the biscotti, and then they... biscotti actually means twice baked ah. so so it's basically you're making it effectively a sponge um and then dehydrating them by basically cooking them a second time and they're meant to snap so you can have them you don't have to cook them all the way through um you can just do it gently do you want me to move on to my next dish or yeah why don't you do that I'm actually, yeah. no 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 we're never going to go to my caramel because it's, it's Come just back ready you're ready and we'll do, do that i'll just keep slicing yep cool thank you boo thank you so it's literally just finished okay and this is where I'm going to put this down low. Um, it's sizzling away, all bubbling up here. It's just amazing, but you'll see it as it comes, it comes out. You see that amazing toffee. Okay. Because it's just so so good. But what's really important now is you need to make sure that you actually clean the lip of the bowl. Um, make sure it's clean. And then um, I'm just going to let the toffee sit. I'm going to put a little bit of um, sugar, I mean, not sugar, salt on it in a minute, but I'm just moving it out of the way um, because it's actually really important to get this washed pretty quickly. So I'm just going to pop in um, some water. There we go. 50 grams of vinegar. I've just got white vinegar. There we go. Good, good slip. And then I'm going to pop the lid back on. 
and it's got the pre-clean mode up here and it's just going to give it a bit of a clean. So um, whilst that's cleaning, it doesn't actually take that long. Just bring back my toffee here and I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt on top. And I'm going to move back away from the machine. So um, you basically then have to leave the toffee for about um, five minutes and then you score it. And then you have to leave it for um, about, uh, actually, no, it actually says to put the salt on a little bit later. But um, after, love that spatula. Um, the, um, after about 30 minutes, you need to make sure you go back and you actually cut it because otherwise it gets too hard to cut. So um, I just wanted to show you that because it was, it, you have to, it doesn't take long to make in that it's doing it all itself, but you have to act when, um, you know, when it says that you need to. When it's finished, you need to get it out of that bowl because otherwise you don't want it all sitting in there and just getting nice and sticky. All right. Um, and we are, and it's finished cleaning. So, uh, Irene, can we come back to you? Oh, oh I, I, yeah, if, if you're not ready, I can show something else. No, that's fine. Yeah. No problem. So I'll just, um, I can keep slicing. Um, so cranberry and pistachio cookie cookie gift jar. So this one's really good. Um, if you're doing something like, I guess, a secret Santa, um, where you need to, you know, put a cheap gift underneath the tree. I went and picked up this jar. It's a mason jar. I got it from Big W, um, your typical mason jar. Um, I bought this from, from Big W at $2.50, gets me some Christmas ribbon, um, unless you've already got some. And I tend to buy these in the packets. Probably had the same packet for about 10 years. <laughs> so it was quite a few. And I just use a, a little bit to decorate on top later. But essentially, this is one of those things that you're basically giving somebody all the ingredients, bar the eggs and the butter, um, to basically put together some cookies. So basically place the glass jar on top. I am using this funnel. You can get that off the mix shop. It's basically a jam funnel, but it's going to stop me from getting all my crumbs and all my flour outside of my thermomix. So pop that on there. It asks for the rolled oats, which I've already put in there. Then it asks for 200 grams of plain flour, which I'm just gonna scoop in. Now it asks you to compact this down. I'm just going to tap it, but you can probably get a glass jar or, you know, our spice jars and, you know, pop it inside and squish it down just to get it really nice and level. Just give, give it the time. Next, it's asking for 120 grams of light brown sugar. I'm just going to give it a bit of a shake. You left a bit behind. Okay. Again, compact it down. It's asking for golden pasture sugar, which my understanding is it's just raw sugar that's been milled down. So you can do that three seconds in your thermomix. So you can see the layers coming up. Next layer. This is a one and a half litre jar, by the way. 100 grams of dried cranberries. Then give it a bit of a 100 grams of, I'm using raw pistachios. Then 
Did I miss anything? I'm just checking all of my containers. No, beautiful. The next step is to add, to remove the jar from the lid, add a teaspoon of salt, which I've got in here. It asks for a, sorry, half a teaspoon of salt. What's my spoon? It asks for a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I never measure, as you can tell. Close enough. And I think it asks for a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So again, I like spice. I put a little bit more in there. Okay. After that, it basically then says to seal it and to um, get it ready with a label with the rest of the instructions. So that's a one and a half litre jar. You can see there's a little bit of gap here. So I think with compacting, even sort of a 1.2, but I'd rather you have the room than try and not have the room, I guess. Um, and that's how I would present it. That's, that's such a good, um, such a good gift, isn't it? Such an easy, easy way to, you know, do a gift, and that's going to look really great under um, under the Christmas tree in the office. Yeah, and absolutely. All they actually need is the eggs, the butter, and I think um, like a teaspoon of baking um, baking powder to to finish it off. And you yeah. give them the rest of the instructions that are on the thermix to um, to finish it off. So, so a, a great thing to. Um, you can adapt as well. So obviously you could put, if you didn't want the fruit, you could put, you know, if it's kids, you can make it chocolate layer or, um, you know. Chocolate it was chip, yeah. So just be mindful, like they've left, the reason they've left out the, say, the bicarb, uh, the, the baking soda is because um, I think it needs to go and because it's sealed in an entire container, it's the sort of thing, you, it, because it's a rising agent, you don't want it to be affected by sitting in the jar. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously can't add the dairy. Um, you know, the eggs and those sorts of things. But um, chop chip cookies, I quite like the cranberry pistachio is a really great flavour. The other thing you could do with this, I think, is that top part there, I would probably put some white chocolate, so that calibre that you had hmm. um, just, just in the top there, but I would probably put that in, wrap it in something so then they can pull it out, maybe separate it with the cellophane and yeah. then use that to dip the, you know, so melt the chocolate and mm. then dip, dip the cookies nice. in the decoration. I think that yeah. would be a nice finish with cranberry. Yeah. Well, cranberry pistachio is really nice that way. Um, and that's what you could do with these as well. I haven't baked them off yet, but you could literally dip those in some white chocolate. Really lovely combination flavour. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I like about that too, it's a nice sort of bonding gift too. You could have, you know, if you wanted some kids to do something with their mum or their dad or whatever, it's a nice thing they can make together. And that's a really good idea, Mary. So yeah, anyone who's um, you know, vegan, they can substitute. So they can put in their own egg, butter, coconut milk type substitutes instead of, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you could definitely use olive oil instead of butter or an oil, a neutral oil. Um, and, and just, I mean, you probably all worked it out, but it took me, because I made this last year and I was just thinking about, I was putting it all in. So the finest things are at the bottom. Because obviously, yeah. if you had the chunkier things at the bottom, the fine things are going to um, sort of sift their way down through, and you're not going to get the layers. So you do start. I know that I know the oats are, are not as fine as the sugar, but they um, are, are give enough a base for the others. So yeah. that, that's why it's that way around. Yep. Yeah. So again, that's a one and a half liter jar. I think with it compacting down, well, I don't know. Better, I'm not sure if a liter will quite fit. It'll be, you know, squeezing it right to the top. Like I said, for me, I think the way I would finish that is just getting some, maybe some lean to or some colour pellets and wrap them in some cellophane and put them in the top and just add that to the instructions, melt the chocolate for dipping the cookies in later to finish them off. Yeah, cool. Fantastic. Thanks, Irene. Um, now, if you can come back to me, Boone, please, just quickly. Uh, I just thought I'd show you, there's a, quite a few things, um, Christmas things are available in the mix shop. Um, so this is a Christmas gift guide, obviously, oh, I won't go further next, but the, here we go. This is where you can pre-order the blade cover and peeler. Um, they've got some other Christmas ideas, but these, these are some great things. You know, you've got um, um, cookie cutters uh, and, and this is actually a gingerbread house. There's probably another one 
picture over here. Let me just move this. So the gingerbread house, they actually give you um, the mold so you can make your own gingerbread house. There's the cookie cutters for, you know, obviously for cookies. Um, a pudding bundle. Oh, I just bought one of these. They are the best. So that is a thermal jug. So you can put your, if you've got custard or whatever, when it comes to Christmas, you can pop it in there and it's going to stay nice and warm or, you know, for your gravy or whatever. Um, the Star Tree cookie cutter, piping bags, you know, the, the, there's a whole lot of um, different Christmas um, gift ideas on here as well. So some baking things, the bunt cake tin, um, yeah, and, you know, as Irene mentioned, the, the glass yogurt jars. So you can, you know, you, you could even do some little mini cookie jar things um, in those and just have them, uh, you know, small quantities as well. Uh, I, there's another one. Actually, I must try and find this. Let me just um, see if I can find this one. I saw this the other day and it was really cool, I thought. Um, honeycomb mould. So you can make honeycomb in your TM6. How good would it be to have this mould and um, and get those shapes for your honeycomb. I think it looks amazing. So pretty. Um, all right. So um, I've realised I forgot to show you my sauce. I have actually I see my dirty kitchen now. <laughs> you can't see it very well, but that is my sauce, um, which I just put in a sterilised jar. So with sterilising your jars, you can actually sterilise them in your Varoma. Put them over your boiling water, steam them for about you know 20, 25 minutes. Um, you do need to dry them out in the oven. I just put them on a tray, very low oven um, until they've dried out and they're a bit warm. So it's, it's always good. This sauce had cooled down a lot because it had asked me to, um, to let it cool and thicken. Uh, but um, if you're having to pour something hot in, make sure you warm your jars first. Not a good thing to put something hot into um, a cold jar. Uh, what else have I got to say? Um, anyone got any other things that they usually make at Christmas time and that they've really enjoyed making and um, giving and people have, have um, enjoyed eating? Anybody got any suggestions of anything else that, that you enjoy? Um, the other, okay, so what Christmas we're going to do. Christmas Sorry? cake. I love Christmas cake. Christmas cake. Fantastic. Thanks, Fizzy. So we are, um, we're going to do, as we said, um, some gifts, um, some more gifts next Thursday. And then after that, we're going to get to things like Christmas cake and pudding and um, mince pies and things, things that you can make ahead and freeze ready for Christmas Day so that um, it's not all a crazy rush towards the end. Okay. So um, anyone, uh, oh, Pearl, how did you go with your, with your, um, your um, air fryer? For you. They, they, they are okay, but they are not crispy as I would, uh, there would be in oil. They still look amazing though, but yeah, okay, cool. They are healthy. Yeah. So, but if it's for the kids who are eating it, they will eat it either way. So, <laughs> and my husband too. So, I won't fry them in oil now, I'll uh, put them in the air fryer. Uh, okay, yeah, so, so so you'll keep the nice ones for you and, and, and give the rest of the family no, those. They, they, will finish, they will finish either way. <laughs> but they're not as crispy, but they're nice. They're nice. Oh, but let's face it, anything deep fry is always nicer. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, we've got a question. How early would you make these gifts? So they generally have um, uh, in the recipe, it will generally tell you how long they you can keep them for. So I know the lemon curd, I have made that, honestly, that, that, will, that will be in the fridge for, it can be in the fridge for months and it's fine. Um, the other ones, um, I can actually go and have a quick look. Let's share my screen and go back to, ooh, cookie do if I can, hang on. So the scotty is good for sort of 30 to 45 days. Thank you, Irene. Let me just this needs get... to be in an airtight container. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> the cookie dough, cookie mixture that I did, I would probably do that. Um, you could probably do that well in advance, actually. But they yeah, need to be in a dry, cool place. But just because flour and you know alternating temperatures aren't great. So same with the nuts. As long as it's an airtight container and it's um. So these are Pearl's little numbers, and that's oh, it doesn't actually say, but but I would imagine that sort of thing you you make pretty close to the time. Um, and we'll have a look at my caramel toffees. Um. 
Do, 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 do. Store for one to two weeks, individually wrapped. So as I showed you at the beginning. Um, and, and a good little tip down there. So it's always worth looking at the bottom of the recipes. Don't look at calories for anything like this, okay? <laughs> um, lemon juice prevents crystallization and possible sugar burning. It doesn't change the taste of the caramel. So, and it was only a teaspoon. Uh, and the other thing that I made, the, the peanut butter fudge sauce, what does that say? Can be stored in the fridge for up to a week um, and um, reheat it. Uh, three minutes in your Thermomix, um, 90 degrees, yeah. speed three. That's a really good um, uh, use of the warm-up mode in your Thermomix. So um, on, your, on your TM6, you have a warm-up mode. I use it for warming up soup and things like that, but great one for warming up these sauces as well. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, this one yeah. for Paul. How long does, did you bake in your air fryer? I put it for 12 minutes, 10 minutes. at uh, 200 degrees. Thanks, Pearl. Um, uh, how long, lemon curd, honestly, I, I can put the lemon curd, I've had the lemon curd, I actually had lime curd in the fridge for nearly a year, and it's all right. It's only, you only chuck it out if it goes moldy. It's fine. Uh, can um, I please add a, ask a question from Pearl, which is not non-Christmas uh, related? Yep. Pearl, when you do your roti in the Thermomix, have you ever added an egg to it? No. Because no. I used to do for my kids when they were small, I add an egg to the mixture. I was wondering whether the Thermomix will take it. Yeah, you can put it in with the Thermomix, you can change your recipes the way you want it. Okay. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> I add extra water to mine because I make it in the. So you can listen to the water then. I uh, increase the water. If you add the egg dough, you you don't you re reduce the water, or you are saying to add more water. I know using what is the thing of using an egg for a roti? And uh, I used to do it just to give them nourishment. Okay. And I I used to add butter, roti, uh, egg, oh, yeah. everything into that flour. Well, you use yogurt as well. They put yogurt as well in the roti. I haven't tried with yogurt. Yeah, they use it because it makes it softer. I brought you a roti maker as well, but it didn't come out. So we had to ask somebody who who's using it to show. Okay, I'll show you next time. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Um, so thanks, guys. Um, as I said, uh, uh, six, 8 p.m. every Thursday night for the, uh, the next five weeks after today. Um, Just before we you are go, though, Mandy. Doing things. Sorry? Just before everyone oh, goes. Yes. So, yep, sorry. Yep. Um, I still need to, to, to do them again. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to change screens one second. All right, I'll, I'll do it. Thanks for speaking, mate. Okay, so um, now I don't know whether you can quite see. So you can see how much, how narrow it was. So it's basically oh, yeah. gone sideways twice as much. Yeah. Um, but they're the right size for a biscotti. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, again, just need to slice them now. So these baked for 25 minutes. Just for those that are going to get the tin, give it another. So I bake these, I bake these for 25 and it's really just feeling it. So it's got to be, you know, not too soft, not too hard. You've got to be able to slice them. The one in the tin, um, I think needed an extra five and I baked that for 30. So I reckon about 35 minutes only because it's double the height, yeah? Whereas these are kind of spreading out, so they don't need as long. So basically, for the one in the tin, test it. If your skewer comes out clean, you're good to go. Um, with these, 25 minutes, and I think they're, they're perfect. And that size, and they're going to fit really nicely in a jar. So really good. I, I can see um, Kmart or wherever it was you went, Big W, you won't have any jars left soon. No, tomorrow. <laughs> everyone's going to be getting in tomorrow morning to buy out all the jars. A bit of rain in the morning. <laughs> cool. Oh, look, Kmart. Came out with W, uh, yeah, but I think these are such a good idea. And think about the cost. So if there's little packets of the flat ones, uh, not this, obviously not, not like these, um, the rejects, but basically like a packet, I think there's maybe 15 in a packet for like $7. Like, and they're the really thin, they're like half the thickness of that. So um, really, really cost effective and um, not a lot of ingredients to go into it. Um, and like I said before, you don't have to use the you know, ouzo. You can use vanilla, orange zest, lemon, lemon zest, nutmeg, cardamom, cinnamon. There's so many flavor combinations. 
Um, the fruit ones, so the cranberry pistachio looks really pretty though. You're going to get some gorgeous colour inside. Um, they haven't dehydrated, but I'll grab one. Um, like they're just the colour wise, they're just so nice and very quite pretty, pretty inside. Aren't they? So very Christmassy. So very Christmassy with the cranberry. And delicious, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Fantastic, wonderful. Thanks, Irene. So You're um, welcome, guys. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank just you. um yeah. Uh, just to say thank you to Irene and Pearl for giving up their time this evening. Um, we will be back next week. And we won't have Irene with us. So Irene's got a very big day next Friday, Friday week. She is representing Victoria and Tasmania in Thermo Stars, which is um, Master Chef for Thermomix. And on, um, Thursday, uh, on next Friday the 12th, she is being filmed from 9 till 5 making her mm. dish. So... <laughs> Uh, big day, big day next Friday. Um, but thank you so much for tonight, um, all of you. And thanks all for coming. Thank you, Boone, for all your behind the scenes. And um, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to hang on, you know, take yourself off mute and ask us. Um, if anyone, is anyone, has anyone hopped on who doesn't have a Thermomix? Because I'm happy to give you a quick tour of you if that's the case. But I'll stop recording now anyway. Good luck, Irene. <laughs>